everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing part three of this body collar tutorial and it's going to consist of doing the white fur here on the muzzle. Um, this little dark spot maybe start a little bit coming up the face but primarily the white fur is going to be the focus of today's tutorial. So I hope this helps. Um, I hope you enjoy following along. Everything you need will be in the description below, colour-wise, the paper that I'm using. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So in part two, we did start coming down into this fur. Um, we do need to darken some of this bit up, but the main part of today is once we've got this part of the muzzle in, we'll know just how dark to go. Also, once we start getting like the underside of the mouth coming in, which you can see on the reference photo, which is black, um, this will this colour in here will obviously affect the shading here. Um, so don't worry if you think it's too light, we will be going back to it. So I'm going to start with my warm grey one and we're just going to do a base layer. Again, I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm looking at the direction that the fur is going for this base layer. Now obviously it doesn't have to be true, we don't have to have any pencil strokes showing the direction of fur. Um, I just find it easier if I'm constantly drawing my base layers and the rest of the piece um, in the direction of the fur. So I'm just going to add a base layer just a little bit um, in here. Uh, I'm not covering the whole of this yet, we're just going to do it section by section. Um, so I can see that there is a like a brownish tone, so we're going to go in with the uh, dark sepia now. Um, let me, there we go. And I'm just going to start marking in some of these darker areas. Very light pressure. I'm not, I'm not really pressing hard at all. I just want to get the general shapes and colours down. Um, I'm going to just glaze over the top. So when I say glaze, you very, very lightly are just going to um, add this brown over the top. So the focus isn't great today, is it? There we go. And then uh, Fane's Grey from the bottom of the nose. Let me just sort out this focus. Sorry, I'm trying to get the focus just right. <laughs> so this is coming out from the bottom of the nose. This is the Payne's Grey. And just following the shapes, I can see it's a bit of a lighter shade here. So I'm going to go in with the Cold Grey 2. 2, yeah. Here. And remember, we're glazing over the top of some of those darker colours. Um, now, obviously, before I've said work from dark to light, here I've gone straight in with the dark because it is a dark area. And then I can just glaze over the top with these lighter colours. Now, obviously, here we've got lighter colours going over the dark. I'm not worrying again about getting these accurate, these fur lines um, that are covering the mouth. And that's because I know when I come in with the black, I can come in and get some really fine details later on. Okay, now I'm going back to the Payne's Grey and I'm just going to start darkening it. So I'm going to just sharpen this pencil. Okay, I've sharpened it. So I'm just going to come in and we're just going to really darken this bit up where we can see the darker markings coming in from the nose there. And again, we're following the reference photo because the fur does change direction so it curls around here then it kind of starts curling around the nose here so you've always got to be aware of that so there's a dark shape right so we need the base layer again so I'm just going back in with the warm grey one as a base layer I'm just going to add this base layer where I can see these darker shapes and then we can just go straight in now, this muzzle. 
remember your base layer is going to flatten the tooth ever so slightly it makes working on top of this paper easier uh, at least it does for me um, so I'm still using the Payne's grey just very lightly marking out some of these darker shapes that I can see and don't worry if you're following along and yours isn't as accurate it doesn't matter draw what you see not what I'm drawing what I can see um, you need to make sure that when you're looking at the reference photo yourself that you're drawing what you can see and this goes in terms of colours as well right so I've marked in some general shapes I'm just going to get the walnut brown because there is a brown tone under here so I'm just going to use this and again blending into that paint's grey Making sure everything blends so it looks smooth. Oops, sorry, I can't see what I was doing there. I need to learn how to properly film without getting my hand in the way. It's not my head getting in the way, it's my hand. <laughs> now I've got the warm grey five and I'm just going to go over this Walnut brown with a warm grey five. I have, can see a greenish tone as well, so I am going to include the green here. I'm just going to get, I have the um, olive green yellowish out, and I do use this quite a lot with my noses, um, whether it's with this fur line, um, like we're doing here, um, I might just add it along the fur line. Um, or whether I use it in the nose itself. Um, I do find I use a lot of greens with my work. Okay, and then back to the warm grey five. And again, you could skip the step with the brown and the green. You don't have to include these colours if you don't see them. Right, I'm going to get... Cold grey two again. I'm just going to bring this in this little gap that we've got going on here. So I am mixing the warms and the greys in this area, at uh, the cold cold greys and the warm greys in this area, because I'm finding that it helps give you like a nice natural greyish colour. And back to the paint's grey and I'm just going to darken this marking up here. I've got the warm grey one again, just as the base layer, where it's darker. Okay, and then I'm going to use the warm grey five, and just like so, just building on these layers. Still using light pressure, and I'm following the the length of my pencil stroke is following the length of the fur that I can see. So shorter pencil strokes for the shorter fur, longer pencil strokes for the longer fur. Okay, I've just got the burnt umber just for the bottom of the fur here where it's a bit more brownish, but it's not quite, it's not the walnut brown. So I'm just going in with the burnt umber. Gonna give me a nice shade that I'll glaze over the top with the um, warm grey. And then I've got the warm grey five just glazing over the top. Yeah, right. I'm just going to get the black. Now you want to be careful not to smudge this, so don't be resting on it. But as we come along the bottom of this nose, I'm just going to bring a few darker black hairs and then I'm blending that black into the bottom of that nose. 
So we want this fur and this nose to all sit and snuggly together. We don't just want it to look like the nose has been planted on top without a care that it's all blending together. Okay, right. We are just going to get in there. I don't know if you can see but that this border collie has a little spot near his nose. I'm going to get that in first before we do the uh, white fur along here and then come down. Um, so I'm just going to get my putty eraser and lighten the graphite. And then I'm going to take cold grey one as the base colour. Now again, follow the fur direction. So this is going across horizontally. So I'm just gonna, and I'm just doing this where the spot is as the base layer. Okay, I'm then gonna get a cold gray four is I think the one that I need. Um, if I've got one out, it's there, cold gray four. And I'm just going to do this along here. And then in this dark corner, I'm just going to get the Cogre 5 just where it's ever so slightly darker along this bottom patch. Okay, so we've got that little dark spot in now. So we'll keep going along the top of this nose. So I'm just going to get the putty eraser and erase this, lift that graphite. And I'm going to go in with the cold grey one as a base layer. Now I'm not going to press too hard, but we do want this nice light at the top. Now obviously I'm saying we want it nice and light and we're using the cold grey one, but this will give the effect of white fur, especially when we start coming in with the dark black fur that this dog's got. And I'm just going to bring that along the top here. To about there where it meets the black fur and we're just going to blend over that. I'm just going to get the warm grey two at the top of this nose where it meets the fur. <laughs> okay and then I'm going to come in with the ivory very lightly so I'm holding it halfway up and I'm just going to glaze across the top of this cold grey one very very lightly I'm not pressing down on the paper we're using very light pressure and that's just going to glaze on top of that nose there okay let's keep going with the cold grey one as um, a base layer um, not as many colours in this part of the nose which helps it speeds up the process for this tutorial. So this is just the base layer. Again, I'm constantly looking back at this reference photo and getting the fur direction is what I'm mainly focusing on at the moment because we are just mapping in the base layer. So I want this fur direction. And then I'm just going to start blending this spot in again. So we're going to get the cold grey 5. And I'm just going to ever so gently, not loads, we don't want to make this spot too large. But I'm just going to blend it into that base layer and get the cold grey 4 for this lighter patch. And blend that into the cold grey one there. So you can see how we're starting to get some form to this nose now. Okay, I'm just going to get the um, cold grey 2 here and I'm going to use this cold grey 2 as the base here 
just start blending this darker area. It's going to start blending nicely into the cooler tones. Get that burnt umber again. So this, I know it's a lot of back and forth the way that I work to build up these layers, but it's how it works for me. <laughs> Okay, we're getting there. Not that's not too bad. Getting there now. Need to keep darkening this up. So I've come back to this part of the muzzle with the cold grey five. Um and I'm just gonna darken some of this muzzle up. I may come in with a black to really darken some of these areas up. Now with this dark patch, I haven't gone right up to the line. Um there's like a cool tone along the edge of the lip, so um, th my this darker tones isn't reaching that very end edge of your lip. Again, it don't matter if you have done it that way. Um, I should, probably should have mentioned that earlier. Right, I'm gonna get the cold grey here, just blend there. Right, so it is cooler here, so we will get the cold grey warm. Base layer. Yeah, I'm going to stick to the cold grey one along here. Uh, and I think we're just going to get this base layer in. So, this is quite a lot of area to cover. This is always the bit that I think is the scariest part when you have so much white area to cover or space not even just white but area to cover you tend tends to be a bit scary at first because there's nothing there you've just got a huge amount of white space looking at you get the cold gray two i'm just gonna blend um cold gray four just Keep this nose looking blended into this fur. Like so. Okay, I've got the warm grey one again as the base layer, and I'm just going to start bringing this down. And I'm using the reference photo to measure just the point where this warm grey is going to go to. So if you get confused about where you are, look at your reference photo and you can measure. So we're working on the fur that's towards the edge of this nose at the bottom. And that will give you an idea of placement. So this shows that all this area needs to get dark now. That's the base layer, so I'm going to get the warm grey 4, have I got the warm grey, do I want warm grey 4 warm grey 5? We'll go warm grey 5, stick to warm grey 5, we've not used warm grey 4, just use it very lightly. Down here. You'll have to let me know which area you would like to do next. Um, once we've done this white fur, would you want to move on to the mouth? Um, or do you want to get some of this black fur in on the face? Um, do let me know. Um, I can do either. Quite nice to get the mouth in, maybe. And we've got a full mouth done, and then it's just fur. But if you want to break up... Um, areas right we've got cold grey four if you want to break up the drawing maybe we do the mouth after we've done some more fur um totally up to you there's a lot of fur so this is just the cold grey four blending everything in okay i'm gonna get the warm grey three just in this area here. I'm going to glaze some brown over it again. 
Um, but I just want this one grey free in for the moment. Again, very lightly. I'm not pressing hard at all. You don't need to press too hard. You want to be able to keep building up the layers. So I've got um, Cold Grey 4 going over the top now. You can just see how mixing these cool and warm tones gives you quite a nice neutral colour. Right, and then we're going to get the uh, Walnut Brown and we're just going to very lightly glaze here. Just where I can see some brownish tones. There's also some pinkish tones going on, but um, again, you don't have to include them. I think I'm just going to stick to the brown um, in this area. Okay, I'm going to get the warm grey again along the bottom here. So this is where, um, if you really study the reference photo, this is quite a cooler colour um, in tone, it's very light, whereas down here you can see the warmer tones. So I'm working from here and here, and then they will meet in the middle, um, and we're going to have to get them blended. Um, or they'll meet sort of down here, more or less, when you look at the reference photo. So if you follow the curve here, this is all like warm tones that I'm seeing, and this is all like a coolish tone, like the, ice, uh, the cold grey tone. Um, so that's why I haven't come all the way straight down. I'm going to sort of work up and work down at the same time and then have them meet in the middle. Um, that works easiest for me. If you want to skip forward and follow the bit where it comes down and then go back and then do, do it coming up, um, that's perfectly fine. I just find it easier for me to um, blend them all at the same time. So I'm just coming in with the um, putty eraser and I'm just going to lighten some of this. Um, fur up here. Oh, I'm going to sneeze two minutes. Oh, I managed to stop the camera recording. You don't need to hear me sneezing. They are so loud. <laughs> okay, so the warm grey one as the base layer all along here. Again, I'm following the fur direction just because I find that a bit easier. And I'm doing it in sections, so if you look at the reference photo, this bottom bit is like one line of colour. So I'm doing this one line of colour first, and then we'll move up and do the next row of colour. Um, I find that easier. Again, you could work across the whole section. You could put the whole base layers in and then work on top of that. Um, I get a bit too confused doing it that way, so I stick to uh, section by section. So I'm going to get, first of all I'm going to get the cold grey 4 and I'm just very lightly here I'm going to get the cold grey 4 in so the cold grey 4 and I'm actually going to get the copper again, I'm going to use this very very lightly but this gives that a nice greyish tone um, over the tops of the greys again this is a stage you could skip if you so desired um, I just, I like mixing these copperish tones in uh, okay, now coming in, I have got the warm grey four now, and I'm just going to blend over the top here. Whew. Pigment and very light. Oh, it's like snapping the pigment. Whew. Very lightly with the warm grey four. And then get the cold grey. So you can see how I'm switching between cold grey and warm greys. I have cold grey far. Just blend over the top. Now if you wanted all of this to be really warm, you could just stick to your warm tones. If you wanted it to be really cold, just stick to your cold tones. Um, and then I'm going to come in with the warm grey free. Um, here, all along this bottom bit now, very lightly, but still one grey free. And you can see we're now getting the shape of the uh, muzzle on this part of his face. I 
again I'm going over the tops just to make sure it all blends you get that copper again just along this part see these copperish tones again if you don't see these colours don't add them in don't feel obligated to add them all in um, I'm going to come down, down as we come further down get the warm grey too not as dark down here Uh, okay, so I'm gonna get the I'm gonna do the next row here. So I'm gonna get the warm grey one as the base layer down here, um, and it's coming. Obviously, I've not gone all the way down to this mouth corner, so we're gonna bring it down here, and I'll do this corner as part of this second row. What I'm going to do actually is if I get the uh, copper, I'm going to just start marking in um, some of these markings, like where the whiskers are going to be. Um, so I'm going to use the copper for this, and um, let's let me work this out. We've got a mark in here, so I'm very lightly um, marking these in, marking like here. And this is just just adding those little markings that you can see and this is going to help later on when um, we start coming up the face you've got these markings in the actors like little little areas that you can go okay I'm here now um, this needs to be there this needs to be there there is a word that I'm trying to think of and I can't think of it right now <laughs> Okay, so I've got in my little markings that are going to help me later on. Um, right, so that also shows me that I need to bring this warm grey up here for this second row. Up to these points there. Okay, so we can increase this dark area um, a bit higher. And then we, um, yeah, we'll increase this dark area like higher and then come back into the highlighted area. So I've got the warm grey free and I'm just going to bring it not not too far higher up now, um, this darker markings. I'm just going to bring it up. Now, I haven't gone around these whiter whisker areas. Um, I'm going to use the slice tool for that. Um, you could use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser if you don't have the slice tool. Um, or you can just um, indent the paper if you wanted to indent the paper prior to doing all of this. Um, so you can do that with these whiskers here. Um, you can also use the brush and pencil um, titanium white and touch up texture to um, create the whiskers as well. Um, I do have a video on different ways of creating whiskers, so I'll have a card pop up. This is the cold grey one that I'm just working on top here. And then I'm going to go back to that copper, very, very lightly with this copper. Over the top. Okay, so this is a dark area, so I'm going to get the... Um, Warm grey free for this marking, and I'm just gonna come in here, going over the top of the copper that previously I did, and blending ever so gently. Um, and I'm gonna use the cold grey one just in between to help blend. It's not blended right well there, has it? So there is a whisker there, but which is fine. But uh, so I'm switching between the warm grey free and the cold grey one. So this is cold grey one. 
here. Um, warm grey free just to try and blend all this area in together nicely. Okay, um, I'm going to get the cold grey too actually. Um, for down here. Yeah, cold grey two is probably nicer than the cold grey one. And that's just going to blend. these areas in nicely okay okay yeah we're going to use the cold grey two and the warm grey two along here so i've got my warm grey two and i'm just going to bring this along here so i'm leaving a gap like a row in between that's where i want the colder tones to be Just here, and then I'm going to get the cold grey too. I'm going to have to darken these little whisker spots up. <laughs> going over the top and into this little gap. Very lightly, I don't, I'm not pressing too hard, but hard enough. Just going to get the warm grey free here. Just want this bit to blend out a bit better. I'm also not too worried if it's not exact to the reference photo. Um, with this being an original piece, I want this to um, just flow nicely. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to get the cold grey two just along here. Coming down. Yeah, and I'm using the cold grey two as the base layer. And then I get the warm grey two over the top. And then to help smooth that out, I'm going to get the cold grey one. Then just use the cold grey one to help burnish this in place. And then we've lost one of the um, whisker markings. So I'm just going to bring this back in with a burnt umber. It's more of a brownish tone. And that's where there's like a whisker mark in there. Here. And then go over the top of that with a warm grey four. A no, warm grey five, sorry. Like a yellowish tinge to this. Um, that's a bit more accurate. I'm not quite sure what's going on with my camera today. Um, I'm sorry about this, guys. I noticed it's been changing quite a lot. <laughs> Hopefully that's okay now. Right, we're back in with the warm grey two. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're getting there now. I'm gonna come in. This is a lighter area now, so I am gonna use the warm grey one as a base layer along here. It's not gonna be too dark along here, so warm grey one. Blend this bit of the warm grey two to about here. Um, and then we're going to get the warm grey two just to blend into the warm grey one here. So I'm, I am using like fur strokes to do this because I'm the Pencil strokes are short because the fur and the muzzle is short. Okay, if you've ever seen a border collie, their fur on the face here is particularly short, um, and then it gets longer elsewhere on the body. Um, so keep that in mind when you're when you're drawing a border collie. Where like the different fur lengths. Okay, and then the warm grey. Uh, cold grey one over the top of that warm grey base layer. You see this is now building up to be our white fur. Um, like so. Okay. And then I'm going to use the cold grey one as the base layer here. 
in this corner of the face so this is where it's all starting to blend together and I'm looking at the fur direction so it's coming down this way and then starts curling sort of to the side here just get the putty eraser just lighten Okay, and then the warm grey one. Just to help blend here. And then I'm going to get the cold, uh, warm grey two here actually. Sorry. Um, see, it's just ever so slightly darker. And then I've got grey one. Just over the top there. Um, I think as well, I'm going to just get the cold grey two here. So I'm, obviously I've not got the whiskers in. So I'm trying to add these colours in between where these whiskers are. This is cold grey two. Uh, Okay, yeah, we're getting there now. Right, so we're going to come back in with the um, cold grey 2 in this gap here. This I'm using this as the base layer. So I, I switch between cold grey 1, warm grey 1, and the warm grey 2 and cold grey 2 as base layers. But I don't use the cold grey 2 as a the same way that I use the cold grey one as a base layer. I still use this as like fur direction. Okay, we've got really dark there. Okay, hopefully you can see this now. That's the exposure was meant to be locked, but it wasn't. <laughs> Having issues this time around filming. Okay, so back to the cold grey two here. Um, and then I'm gonna blend from here into this cold grey two with a warm grey two. So this is coming from this dark area here and here and this is the warm grey too and the warm grey too along here Okay, I'm going to have to darken some of these uh, whisker points up again um so i'm actually going to come in with the uh gold here you could use the warm gray free again um or the warm gray four five one of the warm grays if you don't have the gold um i'm just marking in these whisker points again And then back to the cold grey two over here. And that's coming down into the, like a warm grey colour. So I'm going to get the warm grey one as base layer here. And then over the top with the cold grey two. Now, obviously, I haven't added in all the whiskers on this piece. Um, I'm going to do that at the end. If you want to add the whiskers in before, do. Um, I'm going to add all the whiskers in at the very end. I'm going to come in with this slice tool um, over the whole piece. One grey one. Just here. Right, I'm going to come back to the cold grey one um, in this corner. And this area is all sort of cold grey tones, so I'm just going to blend over here. Um, and then the 
this is called a remembering to constantly look back at my reference photo for the third direction. I'm going to come in again with the um, ivory on top of this, which is going to, it give, when you mix the coral grey one and the ivory, it gives a nice glow to the grey, this white area. It's hard to explain the colour, but it's just a nice colour to use. Um, and I think this area here, yeah, we're going to do this as the base layer. So almost filling in now, this area but this there's not as much detail so i feel like now that we've got this mapped in i can go further on now um right i'm gonna get the ivory over here and this is going over the coral gray worn from here down this part of the face. Now I'm not pressing too hard, I don't want the ivory to be the main colour you see. I just want it to glaze over the top of this cool tone. Um like so. And back to the cold grey one here. So we've got this whole muzzle area that's white covered. So it's just now a matter of just going back through and adding the details um, we've got the tonal values in I'm just going back in with a warm grey one here where it all blends together so we've got all the tonal values in we just need to go in and add details and make it uh, look that bit more realistic just glazing over with a warm grey one so I've just turned my lights off I hope you can see how we're starting to get this like detailing coming in on this muzzle um, and it's just this little area that we need to focus on the detailing a little bit more um, and up here we just need to darken ever so slightly so we're going to um, make sure you've got your glassine or your piece of paper underneath your hand because we will be coming back I'm going to start here and come back down so I'm going in with the cold grey 6 may have to go in with a black um, and I'm going to use a bit of a harder pressure because I want this to be detailed now. And I'm really marking in those darker areas. So I can see. Yeah, I'm going to come in with the black. I can't really see this cold grey six. So I've got the black. Not pressing too hard because I don't want it to look black. I just want these areas to be darker. Yeah, the black's nicer. So that's my stomach. I'm obviously getting hungry. <laughs> Very lightly just using this black to add in these details. Okay, I'm going to come back with the warm grey free. I'm going to... No, that's not warm grey free. Noticed I've not come far enough over with this area, so... So this is why I use really light pressure because as I start coming back in with the details I'm like okay this needs to be extended ever so slightly um, so don't press too hard at first and I'm blending over the top of everything to make it all blend in nicely there um, I'm going to get the warm grey for along here just to darken this part of the muzzle up And then that comes down as so we come back down here into the warm grey free. And all I'm doing is just constantly looking back, seeing what shades I can see, get 
the one by two um, and I'm just adding these finer details so I'm focusing more on the hair and just adding in extra details I can see okay so the one gray three now as you go along and add your tonal values you could add the details on top at this stage if you wanted um this is just the way that I work um which I know I keep repeating but <laughs> get the one gray two You get the cold grey too in here as well. Some of these detail lines. I'm just taking this extra little bit of time to go over areas um, is really going to help bring your piece that little further. Um, cold grey one. Cold grey two here. See, we've just taken this area that little bit further now. So I've got the um, cold grey two. Uh, actually, let's go back to the cold grey three. Just gonna add these lines in. So this is where you can see the fur curving round. May get the sliced wool out actually and add some of these whiter hairs in to help with the fur direction. Warm grey two. So I'm just flicking between warm grey two and three and cold grey two and one. Um, so the colours that we've mainly used, just flicking back between them, cold grey two with these details. One grey two. And I'm going over these whisker marks, so I will have to add them back in. Um, which is fine. So this is the one grey two. They'll all blend in nicely. And the more layers you add, the more depth to the fur you're adding. Get the cold grey two. This is all about adding layers and depth to your piece, which is just going to help with that realism. Um, if realism is what you're going for, which um, obviously I am. <laughs> yeah, cold grey two along here. Right. Cold grey one. I'm also going to come in, I think, with a white. And I'm going to burnish. So we've got the um, the white, and I'm just going to use this. So I'm pressing fairly hard to burnish these light areas. Gonna help get rid rid of some of the tooth as well. Just this lightest area here. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back in with the one grey five. And I'm just going to remark in some of these whiskers. Not pressing too hard because they're not super prevalent. But just enough to see them. And then any darker lines I can see, I'm just going to very gently glaze them in. Um, there is a brownish, there is a pinkish tone there. So I've got the um, white flesh. I'm just going to add this in here. 
because I can see it. Bit of the light flesh on this corner here. Coming from that nose there. Um okay, and there we have the white muzzle for this border collie. Should darken that bit up. This is the warm grey five. I'm just gonna press in fairly hard here just to really darken. This area I'm probably gonna darken more when we get the mouth in. Um okay. So there we go, you have the, uh, obviously we've not gone right up to this line, um, when we start blending the white fur into this black fur, we will, um, I'll go up to this line and I'll show you how to do the blending. Um, but there we have the white muzzle on the border collie. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this helpful, even if you just wanted to learn more about doing the muzzle on a dog or the white fur on a dog. Um, let me know which areas you'd like to do next. Um, do you want to start blending into this black fur or do you want to do like this mouth, like the tongue, um, the gums? I may do the tongue, gums and then the teeth and some of the fur separate because um, this is quite a large area and it can be quite complicated. Um, so maybe we'll do some fur, break it down and do like the tongue and this part of the mouth and then more fur and then come back and finish the mouth. Um, but let me know. Let me know what you would like to do next on this if you're following along. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please do like the video, uh, subscribe. Uh, let me know what else you'd like to see in the future in the comments. And yeah, I will see you next time. Bye, everybody.